Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the fifth attempt of me trying to record this video. This has easily been one of the most cursed, and yet one of the most educational videos I have ever tried to produce, because today we are building a cram cannon focused tank. And it turns out there's a lot of weirdness when it comes to different types type of cram cannon shells. Now the one going off in the background in slow motion is a pure explosive shell, a 2000mm shell against the chaos itself, and as you can see, it does a lot of damage. But this isn't how we started, let's turn off the AI, because when I started off I was actually going to make a penetration depth fuse cannon in which the shell would go inside of the chaos and then detonate, thus countering the heavy armour around its AI. But sadly, it didn't turn out to be very reliable because of the amount of kinetic damage and armor penetration you need is actually incredibly high when you're fighting stacked layers of heavy armor. I didn't know this at the start, so after trying to learn, I ended up making a full clip explaining this, and then afterwards I didn't know how unreliable it would be, so I ended up scrapping that and over and over again until eventually I decided brute force, as boring yet glorious as it is, will be the best option, at least in terms of reliability. So what I'm going to do now is quickly play a couple of clips from one of the videos I ended up not using, which explain why depth fuses are so weird, along with give an explanation and showcase of these shells in use. They are really effective when they work, they can actually one-shot the Chaos and the Abaddon, but the amount of explosive you have to sacrifice means if they ever hit a shield or hit the wrong location, they do almost nothing. And before we go, I would also like to thank everyone who's been liking and commenting in the last couple of videos so I don't have to add this later. As much as I do hate mentioning it over and over again, it has massively helped the channel and I'm just blown away every time I come to record, so a big thank you. And now on with 5 minutes and 55 seconds of an older video. So to explain layered armor as quickly as possible, I've quickly put this together, which is just a little colored demonstration of how layered armor works. The front block here, which of course is heavy armor, has an armor value of 40. The block behind it will also have 40 and so on and so forth. When you hit the front block, all of these blocks behind it will contribute a little bit of armour towards the front block. This doesn't mean they're losing it themselves, but it simply means the front block is going to be much harder to destroy. Essentially, this one will give 80%, which is 32 armour towards the front, this one will give 60, this one will give 40, this one will give 20, and the one behind this would give 10% if it was there. This all adds up to the front block actually having an armor value of 120 when you first hit it, which is very, very high. Now in From the Depths, to do 100% damage to any armor block, you need to do an armor penetration value of times 2.11. So essentially to deal with this armor value of 120, you need to have an armor penetration of 253.2 which is very, very high and very difficult to do. Thankfully, most enemies don't have five layers of heavy armor. Even the Abaddon only has three layers at its most. No, it has four layers at the very front, but that's only one location. It's mostly three thick. The Chaos seems to have two and three thick armor in its most protected sections, so we're really looking for a cannon which has this value, 151 or more armor piercing, to do 100% so the kinetic damage can go through, the shell can go through, and then it can detonate on the inside. It's a little bit weird, and there's even more rules than just this, like if you use spaced armor and everything else, but we're going to pretend that doesn't exist. So here we are with the current test cannon. It has a very high armor penetration value, it has high kinetic, and it has a little bit of explosive. So let's see how it works 
with two types of views. It has an inertial fuse and it has a penetration depth. The penetration depth is set to 6 and the inertial is set to 13.8. The reason being, once the shell starts going through armour, it loses a lot of its speed and then starts to change its angle. If you don't have this higher than 10%, it seems to detonate very, very early. I'm still not sure what the right angle should be, so I am messing around with it, but this seems to work for now. So let's okay. turn off the AI for a second, let's spawn in an enemy version of the Abaddon, and let's see how it does. No, off. Stay still. Good. You know what's cool? Slow motion. So here come the shells, they're going to hit a little bit low, but that should be okay. As you can see, they're going straight through the armor, and after going through several layers, all of that being heavy armor, they have detonated on the inside of the Angron, thus negating a lot of the armor value, and I think that has actually killed it, or at least it has knocked out the turret and knocked out a lot of the inside. If we go inside of the Angron, the Abaddon, you can see the turret has been completely destroyed, this will all fall apart in a second. Lots of the regular metal has been destroyed, loads of the heavy armor has been removed, and all of that with very little explosive charge. I've tried out a lot of just regular pure explosive shells, and this just tends to do better. The reason why we're still using an inertial fuse, however, is because the cram cannons will still be deflected from shields, so this will only happen if the deflection doesn't happen first. If the deflection happens, then the shell simply detonates on the shield, and because it is still explosive, it will do some damage to the enemy. The explosive charge is actually similar to the Abaddon's regular shells, but of course, it's a much bigger gun. And let's put this into normal speed. Sadly, the hotkey at the moment to bring that back is not working, so I keep on having to do it manually in, in the map menu. So, no, it didn't kill the enemy, but it would have taken it out of the fight. Try again. Why do you like the back section so much? Also, look at that recoil. Hit the front. Seriously, one shot here instantly kills it. Maybe should add a targeting section. Also, that reload time. But you get the idea. This is going to be pretty good against the Chaos. If I had the aim point selection at the back, which I simply don't, it would have gone for the front, and that would have easily been a one-shot kill, as it would have hit the AI rather than the turret. Finally, there we are. That's where I was hoping it would hit. So once again, it went straight through the armor. You can see the impact point actually at the top there, it's then detonized on the inside, destroying everything. So, I'm very happy with that, so finally, let's go ahead and build ourselves a tank, which will be the Anti-Chaos, and will be the final large-ish build before we get back into the campaign. I do apologize for how technical and weird the start of this video has been. I've tried to start the video in like five, six different ways, and each time it just didn't go well. This whole episode has been sort of cursed so far, to be perfectly honest. And we are back! So as you can see, it's very, very difficult to get a high enough armor penetration value to start going through very thick heavy armor, which sadly, the Chaos does have in the center. This also explains why we've had such a tough time actually killing the chaos. So it would make sense to go specific with the depth fuses, but like I was saying, they're just not reliable enough, but definitely a cool idea against very specific enemy types. So today we are going to go with pure explosive. Now I did try to limit the armor penetration value. I went with more of a mixed bag going for around about 150 armor penetration and something like 18,000 kinetic damage but then it simply didn't go far enough into the enemy, it landed about here, went to about here, and then detonated with, honestly, not all that much explosive damage, only removing a small section. I think that would probably be the best way of doing things, but for now, we're going with utter devastation in the form of these shells. So I'm going to rework this cannon, I'm going to completely redo this armor, and we are going to make a glorious heavy tank. 
And don't worry, against smaller enemies, this is a one-shot kill. So far, the only thing that can survive a shot of this is the Abaddon, which can survive two, and the Chaos, which normally takes about three hitting the right area. And there's a bonus explosion. So, here is the tank version 1. It looks very similar to the Abaddon, just a bit more basic. The volume maximum is almost hit already, and the engine power is incredibly weak. Overall, this is a very slow, but very heavily armoured, essentially moving turret. The turret is everything about this vehicle, taking up around about half of the maximum volume just by itself. So I think this is likely what we're going to end up with, something simple like this with several layers of heavy armor, not much in the way of anything fancy, staying at the back lines, acting as a bit of an artillery cannon. Now what we could do is make this a stationary weapon, and I know I've discussed this a lot in the past, but every time I go to make a stationary cram cannon, I realize all of the problems with that. Even if we make it specialized, like the Orion, which is one of the Steel Empire vehicles, at least I believe it's called the Orion. Is it you? Yes, it is. Having a stationary cram cannon does pose a lot of weaknesses, and you have to do a lot of very specific things to make it work correctly. Having a turret means no matter where the enemy is, you are going to be able to aim at them quickly, react to them, and then hit them. It's very hard to counter something which is using a turret. But of course, that does give us all of these volume limitations. So is the turret worth all of these issues? I think it is. Also, did that just hit like a piece of metal in the front and almost all of the blast was located? Please remember, the maximum explosion radius in this game is only 10 meters. And apparently the Orion, when being hit from the front, is actually very resistant. Yeah, but we have more armor than the Orion. Are you dead yet? Seriously? Do you know how much damage is in this cannon? It's like 38,000 per hit, and there's two shells. Thank you. So what's probably going to end up happening is just something similar to this, a very back backline vehicle, which will occasionally lob very, very damaging shots in towards the front lines. It's not going to be as effective as a lot of my other designs, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan of cram cannons anyway, but they are at least very interesting to watch. Okay, so when you hit the back of the Orion, it instantly dies. So I don't think anyone's surprised, but I am going to try and sneak in a couple of jet engines, and I'm going to sacrifice a bit of armor on the back to add a steam engine. This way, we can easily set up hybrid controls of both the wheels and thrusters, which leads to that really, really stable movement similar to the Abaddon. This way, we can probably have the tank very far back, even if the terrain is a little bit awkward. Still not overall happy with this though. Am I ever happy with designs? Very rarely. Okay, hybrid controls are now on, and other than the recoil, yeah, that's much more stable. Wow, that was a lot of explosions. Okay, I'm starting to like this tank more. Now that I'm working on the more technical elements of the movement and the AI, I do like it a lot more. And I will now stress, this will be the last building video in quite some time. We're going to really push for the campaign after this episode, as I want to just go straight into it and knock out one of the two enemy factions. Clearly haven't yet set up the AI to avoid going into melee range of the enemy, but still. Probably actually want the AI to be completely cowardly. We don't want to go within 1,000 meters of anything. So even more cowardly than the Krull, to be perfectly honest. The back armor has been sacrificed a little bit for the steam engines, which now gives us a 1,200 engine power. The one before only had 400. But it's still a very well-protected area with no ammunition or, or anything. The ammunition is actually at the front, as this is, I think, 3 and 6 thick, and it alternates between 3 and 6, so... Very heavily armoured front, which shouldn't be facing the enemy too much, as I should always be broadsiding or running away. Turning off. 
Take and care. do I run away from the target? Yes, I do. Okay. It really does look like one of those toy tanks you have when you're a kid. I actually quite like that. It is growing on me. If that cannon was actually filled with ammo, that would have been a one-shot kill. But thankfully, um, this Abaddon, the Abaddon Test, actually spawns in with no ammo, and it spawns in with no ammunition barrels. The idea is just to test out the heavy armor with no shields. It was sort of weird building a vehicle like this, which was built purely as a test vehicle out of one of my own vehicles. It was kind of sad gutting it, honestly. But as you can see, nothing explosive, it's all nice and safe. Although apparently that did kill it, so two shots, well done. Against the live Abaddon, that would have been a one-shot kill. And that was against heavy armor. So, this is definitely going to do its job. I just don't know if it's going to be that successful in a real battle, purely because of how slow the shells are, and the fact we are going to have to wait 18 or 19 seconds before we even fire after the battle starts. As long as it can survive that, it will do decently, I think. And so finally, I am calling the episode here. It's been a very, very long time to get such little footage, and I do apologize if this episode's been a little bit dry, but here we are at last with our three elite vehicles. We have the jet, we have the melee shredder, and now we have the long-range artillery tank, which is going to sit at the back and lob shells all the way across the map, doing some serious damage. Overall, I am actually happy with these three vehicles. I'm unhappy with how this one looks so similar to the Abaddon, mostly because this type of shaped armor is actually really effective, but I am happy with its functionality. For its size and for how much volume is being taken up by the turret, I think it's going to make quite a good addition to our current forces, even if it's going to be used quite rarely. All three of these are going to be used very sparsely, but when they are used, I'm hoping they're going to make a huge difference difference to how the battles will play out. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we are finally going back to the campaign, and we are crushing the enemies. And any name suggestions for these three vehicles are more than welcome. Thank you for watching and goodbye.